this video, we're going to talk about chi-square goodness of fit tests. So to explain goodness of fit tests, we're going to think of an example. So imagine that you have a fair, or you have a die, and you're wondering, is this a fair die, or is this biased in some way? So what you could do is collect some data. So you could roll the die over and over, maybe 60 times. All right, so you collect your data, and you arrange it in this table here. So you have the different faces, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then, for example, here, maybe we saw a one five times, we saw a two six times, and so on. All right, so just looking at this data, probably we would be inclined to say that this is not a fair die, but we should actually do the test to see whether it is or not. All right, so we can think about, well, why do we instinctively think this is not a fair die? If we look at the data, it's because the data are far from what we would expect if the die was actually fair. So what would we actually expect if the die was fair? We would expect the rolls to be uniformly distributed across these six faces. So in other words, if we rolled this die 60 times, then we would expect to see each one, each one of these faces 10 times. And of course there's going to be variability because this is um, probabilistic stuff. We're not going to see exactly 10, um, 10 ones and 10 twos and so on when we actually roll the die 60 times. But this is what we would expect in the expected sense of um, probability. All right, so we have the observed face counts and then we have the expected ones. Now we can think about how will we actually use those to figure out whether or not this die is fair. Well, our test statistic is going to be the observed counts minus the expected counts squared divided by the expected counts, add them all up. All right, so in our die example then, we have, for example, five ones, but we expected 10 of them. So we would have five minus 10, five is the observed minus 10 squared divided by 10. So that would be the um, component for the face one, and then we'd have to do that for the remaining faces. Okay, so that's our test statistic. And then of course we need to know what distribution does this test statistic follow. So this test statistic has a chi-square distribution with k minus one degrees of freedom where k is the number of categories. So like here we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories. So we have k equals six. And so we would use a chi-square distribution with five degrees of freedom. All right, so we have our test statistic. We have our sampling distribution for that test statistic. Now we need to know how to actually calculate that p-value. So here is a little sketch of a chi-square distribution with um, k minus one degrees of freedom. And here is our test statistic, x squared. Then our p-value is going to be this shaded in area here. So in other words, our p-value is the probability that a chi-square distribution with k minus one degrees of freedom is greater than our test statistic. All right, so that's how we do these chi-square goodness of fit tests. So let's see it in this example here for our die. So we're wondering if the die is fair. The null hypothesis is that it is. The alternative is that it's not. All right, so we have six categories here. So we're going to use a chi-square distribution with five degrees of freedom. So we have our sampling distribution for our test stat. Now let's actually calculate our test stat. We know our test stat is observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So we just go ahead and write down all of these things. So for face one, we'd have observed as five, expected as 10, and expected as 10. For the second face, we have observed six, we expected 10, and we again expect 10. So we just go ahead and fill this in for each one of these different categories. So we have six faces with six categories. We have six of these terms that we're adding up. All right, once we get that number, once we get that test statistic, we can sketch out our little distribution for a chi-squared distribution with five degrees of freedom. We draw in our test stat and shade in that right area there. And then we know that our p-value is going to be the probability that a chi-squared distribution with five degrees of freedom is greater than whatever our test stat is. So if we're doing this in R, then we can use this pchisc command. So we would write in whatever our test stat is. So if our test stat is like 13.1, and then we need to say how many degrees of freedom we have. So in this case, we have five. And then we want to make sure that we specify that we want that upper tail. So lower dot tail equals five. 
and that would give us our p value. All right, so now that we've had a quick overview of the goodness of fit test, I have some questions for you to think about to make sure they understand things. So first of all, if the null hypothesis is true, in other words, the die is fair, do you think that x squared, our test statistic, would be small or large? All right, then use that answer from number one to think about how we calculate our p-value. So why do we use this upper tail rather than the lower tail to calculate the p-value? So let's think about the definition of p-value. P-value is the probability of seeing a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one that we observed, given that the null hypothesis is true. All right, so that's number two. And then for number three, think about you're doing two different tests, and in both the tests, just by luck maybe, you get a um, test statistic of 10. In one of the tests you have six group, uh, sorry, in one of the tests you have five groups, and the other test you have 15 groups. Which test will give you a smaller p-value? All right, once you figure that out, then you should generalize this a little bit and say what this would tell us about goodness of fit tests in general in relation to the number of categories. 